EA Sports FIFA 20 sponsors Saturday Social. This is Making It Pro with Ruben Neves, courtesy of EA Sports FIFA 20. Uh, Ruben is on the line with us now. Ruben, firstly, uh, very strange times we're living in, of course. So most importantly, how are you at the minute? Are you safe and well? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Uh, me and my family, uh, everyone is um, is good at the moment. Uh, it's a difficult time, but we need to deal with it, um, and we need to be to be safe and be careful with the, with everything. Well said. Uh, of course, you're having a great season for Wolves, uh, playing in the Premier League, of course. But let's take it back to where it all started for you. Uh, growing up, how, how big was football for you when you were a kid? What are your earliest memories of football? My my first memory. The big memory I have is Porto winning the um, UEFA Cup and the Champions League. Uh, after that, I just wanted to to play football and to to be a football player. What are your your earliest childhood memories of, of playing football? Where were you playing football? Were you, were you going to to parks in the garden on the street? What were you using from a young age? When did you first start playing football? Oh, I think I think I played every day at home in the garden with my with my cousins, my friends um, in the street as well. What was the uh, strangest things you had to use for oh. goals? Fences, cars, oh, what? Normally, I mean, normally my, my mother was was always uh, mad with me because I used the <laughs> the flowers and everything we had in the garden. The flowers? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shoes. Well. well Whatever I had at the in the moment. And who would you say was your your role model, or who you wanted to aspire to be like when you were growing up? It was uh, Andrea Pirlo, because of my position as well. He was the the guy that I that I wanted to to follow and to to be like him. Would you say you model your game on Perlo then now? He, he was the person that you said that you idolised. Do you do you try and emulate the way that Perlo played in your own game? Yeah, mainly mainly the um, the calm, the confident he, he showed. Um, I think it's not easy uh, for a player to play in the high level and be so so calm as as in uh, even playing in a difficult position in the middle of of the pitch um, with pressure everywhere. You need to think faster. Uh, and Pirlo was every time really calm um, and think the game. Uh, very well, so I think I'm trying to to do a little bit the same in, in that in that aspect. You say calm now. I think it's a very good word to use to describe Andrea Perlo. I don't know if you know, but uh, on the day of the World Cup final uh, that he was playing in, and of course Italy won, he was playing FIFA. Can you can you believe that? Yeah, I know. I, I read in, <laughs> uh, in, the, in his book. Um, he said that, uh, that that's that's all what I mean. Uh, he's really. Really calm. He know what 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 he have to do. Um, so when the ball comes, he already know where he needs to put to put it. Um, it's, it was a really good player. You joined Porto. At, was it eight years old that you joined the Porto yep. Academy? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we were, were you known as a bit of a sort of wonder kid, boy wonder? Was there a lot of pressure and awareness on you as a young player? Because that's a very young age to join an academy. What what are your memories like of of that period of your life? Well, in, in that period, I just wanted to 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 enjoy. To be honest, I never thought I will achieve um, the level I am now. Uh, I just wanted to to enjoy football, play with my with my friends. Of course, in Porto, you always want to to win every game. But to be honest, in that moment, uh, until my 12 years old, um, I just thought about play and uh, enjoy and improve. Now, if, if I I don't know what it feels like, because I've never been a professional footballer. But if I did make it pro, I would be ringing everyone in my phone book uh, to let them know <laughs> about it. How did you? What was the first thing you did? Did you ring everyone? Did you have a party? How did you celebrate that? <laughs> No, just uh, just speak with the uh, with my family and friends. Um, of course, I was really really happy. They congratulate me, but just that, just uh, speak with my with my family, with my friends, tell them that uh, I will do everything I can to achieve the highest level in in football. 
Youngest player in history, I believe, to score in the Premier League. Youngest Portuguese player ever to appear in the Champions League. You're very young. Youngest ever captain in the Champions League as well. We, we spoke earlier about the fact that you were at Porto, aged eight. Did you did you feel the pressure at a very young age, or did you feel that you were were thrown in at, at, at the deep end at times in your career, or did you always feel ready for those moments in your career? To be honest, I I, I felt I felt always um, ready. Um, I think I've, I've prepared myself um, really, really well in the in the academy, and uh, fortunately, when I achieved the the first team, I was I was ready to to give a good a good answer, and um, I think that is mainly because of my maturity. I think that I had in the in the academy. I always I always watched. The older, the older players. I always tried to learn with them, and I think that helped me a lot when I achieved the um, the first team. So you make it into the first team. You've captained the side. You're playing Champions League. Things are going well for you. Um, Wolves come in for you, uh, and a club and league record fee at the time. How, how tough a decision was that for you uh, to leave Porto and to go to, to Wolves? Well, in that moment, was a um, tough decision, um, to be honest. Of course, um, I was a Porto player. I was in my in my country uh, playing Champions League, but uh, on that on, on my last season in Porto, I didn't play so much. So I needed to to think about about myself, about my career. Uh, and when um, when I spoke. Uh, with the with the wolves, I really liked the the project, the ambition, and uh, fortunately, that turns in one of the best decisions I I made in uh, in my career. And when you came over, did you have to do an initiation, a song in front of your teammates when you joined? No, uh, I think you didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think they. I think they forgot. Uh, probably they will ask me to do to do it after this interview. <laughs> uh, Sorry about but... that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, there's no chance. I'm I'm in I'm in Wolves almost three years now, so no chance to sing. <laughs> Brilliant. Sorry, I, di I didn't mean to bring that up. If you had to do one, you said there's no chance. What what would you sing? Do you think if you had to pick one well, song? I think I will I will try to to pick a song that everyone knows. Um, I don't know, maybe Despacito, for example. Despacito, okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. Do you want to give us the rendition now or? No, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> How big was Nuno in your decision to leave Portugal and come to Wolves? Because obviously you'd worked with him before, fellow countrymen. Was he a big factor in you signing for Wolves? Yeah, really big. Um, Nuno was my last my last coach at Porto, and then uh, Nuno called me uh, to say that he's uh, in Wolverhampton and uh, he wants me to to go with him. And what is he like, Nuno? We, we obviously know he's a fantastic coach. We see the interviews. What, what's he like away from football, off the pitch? Well, he's a really relaxed, uh, really relaxed person. Um, don't speak too much uh, outside the, the the football pitch. Just, uh, I think, just want to to go home, to rest, to to spend time with uh, with his family, um, and think. And I think he's uh, always thinking about about tomorrow, about what he can do to to help the team. Okay, let's talk about that that uh, ch championship season. You just arrived to Wolves in the championship. You get promoted, win the league. I think you won a player of the season, young player of the season, in the team of the season. Uh, goal of the season as well. It's pretty much your season, Ruben, wasn't it? That season. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a really good season, <laughs> uh, to be honest, for me, uh, but mainly for for Wolves. Um, it was an amazing, an amazing season, to be honest. Um, every time I, I look back to to that, um, I miss the feeling of uh, of the championship. is a really good league. Um, and I'm um, I'm a big fan of that um, of that league. Um, so 
was a really it was really good for me for for Wolves like I like I said we did a, a great job on our uh, on my first season in in the championship but that is because of our mentality and of course Nuno's mentality and the, the ambition we had and the motivation we had to to go forward what was that um that evening or that or those few weeks like when Wolves won the championship did you did you celebrate did you have a party how, how did you celebrate that achievement well we celebrate during <laughs> during one week or two weeks uh, it was a great <laughs> achievement a great achievement achievement for uh, for the club um, and we just wanted to to celebrate with with our families with our um, with our fans it was a, a great week i think my my best week in, uh, in the best week in my career. Best week in your career. Was there one particular player that celebrated the most, or that really particularly enjoyed the celebrations? Oh, always. It's always Connor Cody. <laughs> is it? Go on, <laughs> tell us a story. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, Connor is a great, great fella. Um, I'm glad to, to 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 spend time with him and to play with him mm. uh, because he's a great a great person, and he's always happy. So. When it's time to celebrate, he's the one who celebrates more. Have you been to the gym often with the Dharma Traore? Obviously, he's, he's so big and he's, he's such a beast as well in terms of his physicality. I mean, what, give us an insight into what, what his no, routine we, is like. We normally, we normally do a, a strength session. Um, yeah. But it's uh, I, can't, I can't explain Dharma Traore's strength. <laughs> You can't explain it at all. No explanation. <laughs> we have, we have. I will give you a, an example. We have a squat machine. Yeah. You can broke the squat machine. He, he's broken the squat machine before. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, uh, it's out of uh, of normal. <laughs> Not normal. No, I think I think that's right. Not normal. I, no. I read somewhere that he, he doesn't do a lot of gym work, which I just can't believe. Is is that true? Is it all natural strength or? Uh, we don't see him doing that. Uh, just do the normal work activation with us, um, strength work with us, but uh, well, gym, we, we don't see him doing too much. Uh, give us an insight as, a, as a, a player that's come from a different league, how much of a dream that was for you. Was, was it always a dream for yours, even growing up in, in Portugal, um, to play in the English Premier League? Well, it's, it's amazing, um, to be honest, the atmosphere uh, in the stadiums. The grass, uh, the quality of the um, the quality of the players. Um, every every single game is a hard game. Doesn't matter if you play at home or away. Doesn't matter the opponent we we look. So it's a great league. We don't see we don't see in the other leagues the competitive we have, uh, the competition we have in the in the Premier League. What away grounds have you found to be the, the, the best atmosphere that you've played in in the Premier League? Is there one that stands out? Well, um, I'll, I'll need to say after Molyneux, uh, of course. Yeah, uh, clever. I'll need, to say, <laughs> I'll need to say Anfield. Just just for the the, the noise, for the, what, what is it about Anfield that, it, that is different from the others? Yeah, the noise, the um, that stand behind the goal um, when they start singing. Yeah, it's really loud, um, and all the stadium go go with them. Um, of course, they are in the in the great moment that that help. Um, but yeah, it's the um, the most difficult atmosphere we I faced in the in the Premier League. Do you only score screamers from long range, Ruben? I've never seen you score tapping. Uh, what, what, why is this? You love scoring from 20, 30 yards, it seems, but not from three yards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I spoke about that a few a few times. Um, I think it's all about my my position in the pitch. Uh, to yeah. be honest, um, you don't see me a lot of time inside the box. So every time I had I have chance to to shoot and try to score outside the box, I try because it's um, it's a good solution for for the team as well. And go on then, your favorite goal that you've scored? What would you say it is? No, of course, uh, Derby County in the Championship. Yeah. Amazing goal. I, I thought I thought you'd say that because it was such a good goal. Man United as well um, was a special goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, a great goal because we worked during uh, the week 
and uh, when we when we arrive to the game and the work uh, goes well, it's a really good feeling. And that derby goal, is that something that if you practice again, you could do regularly or is, was it a one-off? I mean, it, it was such a unique goal that. Have you, have you tried to replicate it after that at all? I tried to replicate with Jimmy Bullard to the Soccer AM. Oh! Not bad, eh? <laughs> Not bad! <laughs> That's ridiculous! <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> and I, I did it on the on the second attempt. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. <laughs> it's a very exciting time for, for the, the Portugal national team. Now, how, how far do you think it can get and what can this team achieve, do you think? No, I, th I think we have a, a great squad, as you said. Uh, we have a lot of uh, talent. We have a very good uh, coach. Uh, but I think our mentality is what is uh, putting us on, on the next level. Um, the spirit we live in the national team is really good. Um, and the goals we, we put to ourselves, to ourselves um, always get us motivated to do, to, do, to do the next step. I can't speak about Portugal without not talking about um, Ronaldo. You've been in Portuguese squads with him. Give us an insight into what it's like to, to be around and share a pitch in the training ground with Ronaldo and where he ranks for you in terms of the greatest ever players. I think he's the, he's the best, of course. Um, the, way, the, way we, the way he trained, um, the, the way he's uh, professional, the way he tried to to help the the young players to give to give uh, to give us some experience. Um, it's a really good guy as well outside outside the pitch. But what impressed me is what impressed me more, uh, of course, is the way the way he trained. Um, he never stopped. Uh, he has every time he have uh, something to improve, um, and he's not. He is not happy with the, with him, never. So you just want to train and to play and improve even more uh, to achieve more and more and more goals. And future ambitions? What do you hope to achieve uh, in the game? Do you set yourself goals? What 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 is next for you? And what would you like to achieve in the game? Well, uh, of course, everyone wants to to win Champions League, to win the. World Cup to win titles with the country, um, but to be honest, I'm just thinking about about the present. I'm just thinking about the Wolves and uh, how far we can we can go in the, every competitions. So my goal at the moment is try to put Wolves in the um, try to help Wolves to achieve the the highest level. Ruben, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. That, of course, was Making It Pro with Ruben Nevis. Thanks to EA Sports, FIFA 20.